What is up you sexy nerds, I'm Wildfire1. We're gonna be doing Mermaid Hunters Part 4. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give the mic to Clovis, let him begin the, uh, just begin this and, and kind of tell you guys who we're playing with. Well, I'm Clovis here. I'm running Mermaid Hunters on the magical land of Yeld. We've had quite the adventure so far. We've given boner pills to giant furry fairies and we spent a night at the inn, or as one of our friends calls it, the night place. Speaking of our friends, here they are. What's up, y'all? It's Grizzly McBee. I am playing Mikey, the nine-year-old know-it-all. All right, guys, it's Monster74 here. I play 11-year-old Tomboy Millie, or Mildred. And hi, guys. Ice Cold on 6 here, and I am Dave the Dog. Good, but then got better. Because, you know, getting better from death, that's a thing that happens. <laughs> it's like I never died in the first place. I watched it happen. Only in the Are land you? of Yeld. <laughs> Anyways, last time. We watched as Mikey tried to take a porcelain doll from the room at the inn. Or the night place. <laughs> But the owner wouldn't let him take the porcelain doll, despite his best efforts. He tried all of his clever trickery, but apparently this know-it-all didn't know how to sweet-talk the owner out of the porcelain doll. He was interested in it because it was just like the one back at the house that started this whole shebang. The sleepy place. The next morning, they get up and leave that inn filled with monsters, or the night place, or sleepy place, whichever you prefer and continue on their search. They've heard that if they continue around the lake, they'll find a waterfall, and therein, Melody, the undead mermaid, might be found. Start following the lake shore around. I really think that that doll was going to help, though. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. We shall see. Apparently, News of, the, of your mermaid murdering has already gotten around as you see people sitting around the lake fishing. It's been less than... It's been less than 24 hours. Well, when, you know, you like to fish, as soon as you hear you can go back to it, you do. Let's keep going, guys. As we pass people on the shore, I just say, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. One of them grunts at you, but you don't really get that much of an intelligent response. They seem to be ignoring you and trying to get their chill fishing groove on. They probably just want to eat. Speaking of eating, do we have any snacks? What about you, Dave? No, I don't. As you can see, I don't really have a bag. But you do have a net in your mouth. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of impressive you can talk with that in your mouth. It's like ventril uh, ventriloquism, really. I'm <laughs> talking outside my mouth. <laughs> my dog is amazing. He dies and then comes back, and now he can make the net talk. It's awesome. How far are we away from the waterfall as of late? Well, you know, look, from judging at the lake, if you walk there for a while, you'll definitely get there. Thankfully, oh. for the most part, the walk is uneventful. For the most part? Nothing attacks you. Oh, no, that's, that's good. good. Always keeping our eyes on you the do have one. You do have one fisherman yell at you to not touch his beer. Well, okay, Mikey, how about you, like, not get near that beer? I don't. I don't drink that stuff. Uh, we all know you do. Sneak that stuff dance. for old people. <sighs> Sorry, I was drinking a beer. Eventually, you do come up in the waterfall. There is a bit of a problem, though, that wasn't really mentioned. The waterfall is kind of a sheer wall, straight up. After all, it's water falling down. They didn't call it a water slide. Or even a nice, mild, elevated water plane. It's a waterfall. Why don't you check behind the waterfall and see if there's anything? 
in the openings. You put your hand behind it, your hand gets super cold from the freezing water, but there's nothing up there. Now you do notice, oddly, the water coming out of the waterfall is way colder than the water that you met in the lake. Oh, well, I guess we have to find a way to get up there. This is like ridiculously cold water coming out of that opening in the cliffside. I think the water is only warm because someone uh, had to relieve themselves in the water before. <laughs> Only you, Dave. That would be like if Dave made the whole <laughs> lake warm. That would be they would be like dehydrated. <laughs> I mean, I hilarious. did die, so maybe I died of dehydration. What I'm gonna do is he's in a lot of water, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I ain't drinking that water. Is there a path up to the top of the cliff? No, but there is foliage alongside the cliff face. Mikey, maybe we can climb that. Do we have any rope? I saw it on MacGyver one time. Nope, there was rope back at the shop, but you didn't buy it. Why don't we just try to climb up the vines? Yeah, but, and the use top. the foliage as footholds. Uh, I'll try first. Um, Millie, you may have to carry Dave. <laughs> Roll your strong value. You roll a six. Now let's check the comp the difficulty of climbing. It was a seven. Congratulations! It was a two. <laughs> <laughs> I even rolled a two d six against you, and it was both ones. The gods of climbing have smiled upon you, Mikey. Why don't you tell us how you heroically climb up the foliage? I got my weapon strapped to my back. I'll look up the side of the cliff as sweat beads down my brow. I look at my hands from the days of battle and I spit in my palms and rub them together. And with my right hand, I reach out and I grab the vine. Next thing I know, I'm standing at the top of the cliff. Mikey turned into a um, running shoe <laughs> commercial. <laughs> <laughs> at the opening that the water's coming out of, you find a rope ladder that someone pulled up. It would have been helpful if someone hadn't pulled it up into the top of the cliff. Hey, Millie, you'll never guess what I just found. What'd you find? You probably found more boner. <laughs> Is there anything else besides the rope ladder? There's a cave that goes further back into the cliffside from where the water is coming. But no. And some torches on the wall. What do you see up right. there, Mikey? So as soon as Millie says that, I grab the rope ladder and I throw the excess off right down at her. Please tell me he attached it to something up there. Oh, it's already attached to something up oh, there. Oh, thank you. That's Lord. why I said the excess. <laughs> if it wasn't attached, that would have been super awkward. <laughs> You're welcome. After throwing the rock ladder down, Mikey notices... The word melody has been carved into the boulder. This must have been her clubhouse. This must have been where she come to hide from the monsters. Come on, Dave, get on my back. We'll climb up there. Okay. Thankfully, with a ladder to climb, it's actually not that hard to get up. Are we there Is yet? <laughs> Eventually, with Dave clawing, with Dave the dog semi-clawing into your back, that feels good. You do climb up the rope ladder, despite the fact it shakes a bit. Up there, you see the rock Mikey is looking at. The torches bleeding further back into the cave. And you can see the water is kind of even colder up here. Is that is that a, a word etched into the uh, boulder? Yeah, it says melody. Ooh, we must be getting close. Yeah, I climbed that waterfall like a champ. Let's follow these torches. they got to lead somewhere. The cave path that you follow has a bit of twists in it, which unfortunately prevents you from seeing too far ahead. As you get further back, it gets colder and colder, and you notice there starts to be these chunks of ice literally floating in the water the further back you get. This must be why it's so cold. Yeah. Is this Santa's secret path to the North Pole? 
penguins. Yes, Mikey. You're going to find Santa shacking up with a mer with an undead mermaid. Be no, you're thing. not. Be that was a sarcasm. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be the weirdest thing we've seen. <laughs> and <laughs> and fanfics <Mikey>. go. <laughs> Eventually, the path leads to a cul-de-sac-like area. At the far end, there was what seems to be a stone pedestal with some artifacts on it, but you can't really make them out from this distance. Guys, look at it. In here. It is, but look, collectibles. Collectibles? Yeah, on the shelf. You can't see them? No. Look over there, up against the wall. I'll huddle with Dave. He always keeps me warm when I would get cold. Careful, I have a net. Don't make me catch you. <laughs> Just the walls are iced over, and then there's the shelf with the items on it. It's a stone pedestal. Stone pedestal, okay. And is the pedestal in the middle of the room or it's on the far up back against... side? Okay, in the By middle the way, of the room is just barren. If you enter the room, you will be in the water. There is the the walkable area ends as you get into this open area. As you walk in, suddenly a metal gate slams down, closing off this area from the rest of the caveway. Is the water rising? No. However, up from the water bursts forth Melody, the undead mermaid, and two giant water serpents. <sighs> yes. Well, crap. Melody's skin resembles the crusty shell of a crab, and in her hand she clutches an ancient harpoon. Two sleek, writhing serpents rise from the water next to her, ready to fight. Right. Melody, wait, we're not here to fight. We just want to talk. Yeah, we want to save you. Melody's response is a shriek that could shatter glass if there was any here. By the way, Mikey, your glasses get cracked. <laughs> no! My mom's going to kill me. Oh. Yeah, I can see a bunch of them. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die! So, who plans to go first? Uh, eat my swordfish. That's not how that works. Darn! <laughs> you use it as a weapon in a round, and then it's broken. You don't eat your swordfish, you hit someone <laughs> else with it. Yes. If you eat your swordfish, you just might kill yourself. Or how about I force them to eat the swordfish. Um, good luck with that. <laughs> I'll go first. I have a rusty sword, which makes my charge. All right, your movement is your brave. You have brave two by default. You may move, let's see, one, two, three, four, five spaces. Millie, ignoring just how fucking cold the water is, charges forward <laughs> like an angry bat out of hell with her rusty sword. Well then. Oh, 46. <laughs> you roll, you come rushing forward and roll a 17. Let's take a look at the snake stats. Dear Mr. Snake, you have a tough stat of one. <laughs> you do in fact, as Millie predicted, make a good place for her to keep her sword. The snake becomes Millie's snakeskin scabbard. Why don't you tell us how you run the snake through? As, I, as I'm running, I go and I swing it, my sword, and it just, Goes clean through, right under the head. Head plops into the water. Serpent's dead. Currently, yeah, Serpent but... One is looking at where Serpent Two just lost his head, and Serpent One is currently reconsidering his life decisions that led him to this battle. So, Dave, are you going to go? Yes. However, Serpent One attempts to use. Excuse me. It's a brave roll against each other. 
So, Dave the dog, what is your brave value, and do you have any modifiers like weapons that might help you? Uh, none for brave. I just have brave one. Then get ready to. I'm sorry, Dave the dog. You can't win that. Oh. While nice. Dave the dog is arguing with Mikey about whether or not he has a good plan, Serpent One decides that if he's going to live through this and not lose his head, Millie has to die in now. Has to what? <laughs> Serpent One comes up behind Millie. Opens its mouth with a hiss, because union rules say the snakes have to hiss before they bite, and attempts to bite into Millie. You will roll your combined tough values. So that'd be 2d6. You have 2d6 plus, nope, nothing from weapon, yes, you have 2d6. It's 8. So, tell us how Millie blocked the snake's bite. It's a snake came towards Millie, I raised up my sword and blocked it by hitting the sword against his teeth and jumping out of the way. As the snake bites down onto your sword, he curses the union rules that required him to hiss before attacking. Clearly it gave him away. I imagine the snake going like, God damn it, <laughs> you know, something like that. <laughs> the snake then chooses for Melody to go next. Does I'll use my excuse me. I that the snake. is the correct time. All right, Mikey, roll a combination of your braves and your excuse me. Yes, ice cold. You will do three d six. Oh, well, there. Wow, did it for you. He's not in this. <laughs> you have rolled a nine. If I die, I swear to God. It's Wild's fault. There is no way Melody can beat your attitude. <laughs> That's right. Mikey, take your turn. Show them how you know everything. Okay. I will move forward. You may move one square for each brave value. You don't get to count, excuse me, though. And more, one more if you have a swim value. I get to move one. Unfortunately, unlike Millie, Mikey isn't as much a fan of cold water. And his body wants to go against the flow. So, Mikey, who shall go next? Dave at you. I choose you. However, Melody attempts to interrupt again. Dave the dog. Can you beat that attitude? Oh. Anyways, roll 1d6 and hope you match it. First Dave the dog is bi a bit busy doggy paddling the cold, frigid water and dealing with wet, waterlogged fur. Melody pulls out a tray of sushi rolls and downs them. Eldritch <laughs> energies seem to swirl about her body. Melody then po points towards Millie and begins chanting something that doesn't really make any sense. Millie? Well, I'm sorry, but your smart value wasn't high enough to not take damage. You suddenly feel your body racked with pain. You don't even understand what the mermaid did, but you feel like you just got punched in the gut repeatedly. You still have one hit point left, Millie. Who shall go first this round? I shall. So, Millie, what do you do? Can I move so, up? So, you move things? towards Melody, then. Yes. Only uh, you may roll a 2d6 to attack. You no longer get the charge bonus. It's no longer the first round. You roll an 8. You turn towards Melody. You rush over and swing your rusty sword. However... It clacks harmlessly against her crab-like carapace. Melody shrieks at you in anger. Who shall go next? I will. Serpent One uses excuse me. Oppose the roll. <laughs> wow, you just barely won. Wow. <laughs> 
I rolled a 2d6 and got a 2. That is literally the worst I did, and you rolled a 2. <laughs> by the way, you formed an action chain by going in a, in a row. You get plus one dice on stuff right now. You may move two spaces. Okay, I'll move two spaces up. Who shall go next? However, Melody attempts to interrupt. Mikey didn't have enough attitude and he wanted to hang on to that fish. Melody reaches out to touch Millie. Her hand crackles of energy. Ah, that was a just high enough roll. Millie, your, bo your body is somehow racked with absolute utter dread and horror. You can't possibly take a turn until the absolute end of the next turn because you're so freaking out. You don't know what just happened. Millie, how do you feel right now? Absolutely terrified. The water just got warmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Melody now chooses for the serpent to go. Mikey, are you going to challenge it? I am. Well then. I'm using my rude fish. So give me a three, uh, 3d6. You bite off the rude fish's rude face. You feel even cruder than before. The serpent <sighs> couldn't handle your attitude. Yes, yeah, right, you scaly little bastard. Mikey, you may move one square. That rude fish only increased your excuse me value and the action chain was broken when Melody butt butted in. Serpent One does not appreciate the fact that you went before him. <laughs> Serpent One was thinking about finishing Millie off, but Serpent One has decided to take care of this cocky little brat that went first. Thou shalt not cut in line, don't you know? I do what I want. Serpent One quickly swims over to Mikey's face to bite it. Can't I do it, excuse me? Actually, the dog can challenge the snake. I can? All right, yeah, excuse me. All right, so- Pikachu, go. You just barely beat it. <laughs> Everyone just wants to go before Serpent One's turn today. No <laughs> one's letting Serpent One go and have his turn in line. You ha you have an action chain going, M Dave the dog. Now you can move two spaces because of this. <laughs> and I'm right up in its face. All right, I'm gonna roll three d six. Actually, it's 4d6. Four? Oh! Because oh. you got your bonus. Oh, yeah, the bonus. Actually, the bonus. Nice. Congratulations. You have the serpent in a net. net. The serpent is thrashing about. The serpent tries to attempt bite you for having a net, but rolls at a minus one. <laughs> oh, my God. You just <laughs> got out of it. Why don't you tell us how this snake, as it's thrashing about in the net, fails to bite you? Well, um, I manipulate the net so the net gets caught in its teeth, and I jump on its head. Okay, who's going to go this first round? So yes, yep. Mikey, can you get up there in time? I will yeah, use the swordfish. Using the swordfish increases your movement by one. By the way, its toughness is... Mikey, tell us how you dispatch the snake. <laughs> so seeing that my brave dog Dave had this serpent in the net and did it try to bite Dave, I got a flashback of when the mermaid drowned him. And I pulled out the swordfish and ran with all my might. And as I got right up to it, saw its mouth open and stuck the bill of the swordfish straight through the mouth and out the back of the head. Did I not say we'd try to force him to eat the swordfish? You did. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> the dog's plan was in fact brilliant. You made the snake eat the swordfish. <laughs> Unfortunately, after you stick the swordfish in the back out the back of its mouth, the swordfish shatters like a million pieces of glass. Serpent one is no more. I choose Dave. <laughs> All right. However, Melody looks towards Dave the dog and shrieks. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten it anyway. Melody swims over. 
spins her giant harpoon in the air and swings it at both of you. Oh, no, no, no. It's not going good. <laughs> Let's see. Dave the dog? It was nice knowing you. Yep, I knew it. Mikey? You watch as Melody swings her harpoon. Skewering Dave the dog along the way, the harpoon continues towards your face. This is the second time you've seen your dog die in the last few days. As the, as the harpoon goes to your dog's face, a moment later, your dog disappears in a puff of smoke like last time. Roll 2d6. Don't fuck this up. It's Mikey, tell us how you blocked the harpoon. As I see the swing of the harpoon and see poor Dave disappear into a cloud of dust again, I see the harpoon getting ever closer to my head and I think, this is it. And as I clinch up, my right foot slips on a pebble in the water and I duck right under it as it goes right over my head like in the Matrix. Dumb luck! <laughs> Millie, suddenly the racking fear in your head clears up and you realize you've let Dave the dog die again while you were cowering in terror. <laughs> Damn it, Dave. <laughs> Dave's not here, man. I'll take revenge on well, it is your turn. I'd like to move forward beside Melody, please. Roll your strongs. Yes, you have a 2d6 to roll. Will this be enough? Yes! Oh my yes. god! <laughs> <laughs> Melody rolled 3d6 and got a 5, which was not what your 6 bested. The shell-like carapace surrounding Melody cracks. Tell us what you did. So last time when I swung it, the, the sword, it just bounced off. So this time what I did is I went beside her and I thrusted it into one of her, into one of her uh, joints. The sword doesn't go all the way in, but that is a nasty crack there. It looks like if you hit that spot again, an attack might actually go all the way in. New round of combat. Who goes first? I will. Mikey, I make Dave proud that he was your dog and not regretful that he tried to save you. I will move up and with mallet in hand, I swing for her head. However, with Melody's armor now showing its signs of fatigue, she doesn't get to roll as much defense. <laughs> Unfortunately, as your righteous fury to avenge Dave the dog overtakes you, you swing and hit her armor in a different spot, not the crack spot, and it bounces off with a ping. You will die, crustacean. I choose Millie. Melody shrieks out, not happy that you killed her two snakes. If you have a bray, if you have a rude fish that you haven't already used, now would be the time to use it to win this roll. Oh, yeah, I have a rude fish. I would like to use it. Millie, not about to let this bitch walk all over her, <laughs> bites off the rude fish's rude face and prepares to get her attitude on. The rude fish tastes like defiance in the 80s. Woo! <laughs> <sighs> Seven! Millie's attitude was just good enough. Millie, you may roll plus one now in the action chain. All right. Oh, you oh. rolled an 11. This Sorry, just might work. Yes. Seven. Tell us what you did as you go once more for that cracked spot in Melody's armor. Right after Mikey hit and pinged it, I went and rusted my sword up once again into the same spot, getting in between the cracks, my, my sword going all the way in. Melody shrieks out and pushes you away from her as this green gas seems to pour from the wound. Oh no. As Melody coughs up gas similar to the gas coming from the wound, she slowly swims over to the pedestal and what seems to be her dying breaths. One of the, she takes one of the items and flips it up. It seems to be a picture. And then she collapses dead in the water. The gate blocking your way back out of the cave disappears. 
So do we go and see what she flipped over? The picture that she flipped over? Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be of her family. You find a picture of a much less undead looking mermaid who looks similar to Melody, but not exactly. And the shopkeeper you saw outside the inn selling wares. We take this to the new, to the shopkeeper. Well, what are the other two items? The, 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 the other two items includes another picture which is still turned face down. I'll pick it up and look at it. It's the house you broke into, you think. Maybe a few decades earlier when it wasn't in shit condition and the backyard was nice. You see the gazebo in the backyard in great condition and a girl, little girl standing out amongst a party holding a porcelain doll. What's the other, what's the other object? The broken remnants of yet another porcelain doll. We pick it up and put it in the, the broken doll into my backpack. I can almost hear Dave yelling at them right now. <laughs> you hear a dog in the background. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, sorry, Clovis. That was just the perfect thing to say. <laughs> Suddenly, three treasure chests appear behind you. Two hey, normal you ones and one very golden-looking one. Well, since I've done the most damage, I think I get the very golden one. Yeah, but since you let Dave die, I think I should get the golden one. <laughs> that let Dave die. Not me. I was in sheer terror. I don't remember what happened. Yeah, whose fault is that? You had to run into the action again and leave us behind. You don't have sensitive toes. Also, by the way, the water you're in is no longer cold. It's not Millie's fault, though. <laughs> <laughs> the ice on the walls has started melting. Which one do you open? The one on the left. Roll a 2d6. It's a six. And you open it to find... Da 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 da. Nothing. All right, Millie, you open the other one. The the other normal one. Ten. In it, you find some coins. Go ahead, Millie. Millie you you now have one. some coins. Now, we will open the big one together. You shoot me. You open it and find some coins. Mikey, you now have some coins. Should we take these items back to the innkeeper? At least the doll and the picture of Melody and the shopkeeper. You eventually find your way out of the cave. It's a bit dark. All the torches that were lighting the way in are no longer lit. In fact, they don't seem to be there at all anymore. Well, then we head out and climb down the rope ladder. And then we head back to town. As you walk back to town, you definitely notice it's gotten darker outside. You're not sure how long you're in that cave, but it seems like more time passed than you really think they should have. Which is a mostly quiet walk back because it seems most of the fishermen have, are already left. Assholes didn't pick up their beer cans when they did. You walk up to the shopkeeper, who currently I'm seems to be looking around. Them bored and drinking his coffee once again. Believe he looks this. at you, as you walk up and approach, he looks at you and says, I see your dog is missing again. Yeah. Well, I, I pull the, the photo out of my bag and say, uh, well, he wouldn't be dead if it wasn't for clack and just set it on the table in front of him facing him. He picks up the photo and stares at it for a long time and starts, and his eyes begin to water up. He slowly says, please just tell me she died quickly. She as quickly as we could. Yep, she killed my dog. So we made it as I stabbed her. quick and as painful as possible. The shopkeeper looks at you and says, you're not very good at this consoling people thing, are you? Hey, you're not consoling me. My dog died again. And she was very hard to beat. <laughs> you guys, sorry, I gotta chime in. You guys, he, he's crying his eyes out. And you're like, I stabbed that bitch to the heart. The shopkeeper sighs, I'm sorry. But she was cursed. We tried talking to her to, you know, let her know that we were there to help her. And then she 
and sick your pet uh, snakes on us. Which we destroyed, you know, easy. Besides, I'm sure your dog will be okay in a few days. He says, anyways, thank you for finally putting Melody to rest. Did we get a uh, prize? He looks at the, you two and says, yes, you can still go home through the door you came here in. If you stay at the inn, your dog will come back. I guess we got to stay at the inn again. As you walk oh, off, wait, no. the shopkeeper, who has been trying to keep a straight face the entire time, you can finally hear him sobbing in the background. Alrighty, I think that's a good point to stop for now. Uh, I like how you people... <laughs> Hi, we killed your cursed friend. Can we get a prize? Well, you can tell you are brat kid. No, that was, uh, it was actually kind of funny. Just... Well, I thought that was... I mean, we got three chests. One had nothing in it, and we got like ten coins. <laughs> that was our prize. And a dead dog. But Millie is like... Uh, hey, uh, here's a picture of, uh, the, someone who's making you sob. You're really sad. Can we get something for this? <laughs> we'll go ahead and end this like we usually. What's your guys' favorite part so far? The battles. Yeah, I would say the battles. I yeah, do I love the winning. story. <clears throat> yeah, I keep winning. The story is really good. I liked it when I I will it. say, I'm disappointed that I keep dying. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess the next one will probably be the last one. I was kind of hoping we'd, we'd finish it off this time, but the story well, is going to be at good. Two hours. Uh, oh yeah, my favorite moment definitely just has to be. So yeah, we, we killed your wife. We stuck a knife in her. She was actually really painful. We killed that bitch. Can we get a prize? <laughs> You're a dick monster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't wait to see this video. I still love that last video where you suddenly just have text spelling out, you can have a bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, till then, we want you to stay nerdy, stay sexy. Always. 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 Always.